Good evening all, I'm Aditi Lamba with the Wednesday night edition of South Asian News. Welcome to Vision of Asia, voice of our community. We are coming to you from our studio in New York City. Here is what's happening tonight in the coronavirus pandemic. The global coronavirus cases has surpassed 15 million with at least 617,000 deaths. In the United States, we are looking at nearly 4 million cases of COVID-19 and more than 142,000 deaths. The total includes all 50 states and U.S. territory. Today, the nation reached a grim milestone of recording more than 1,000 deaths related to COVID-19 in a single day, while infections and hospitalizations are rising in 40 U.S. states. Florida, Texas, and California continue to be the hotspots with surge of cases. 27 states have halted or rolled back reopening, with more governors placing mass mandate in their states, and dozens of hospitals are out of intensive care unit beds. The surge in new cases is greatly outpacing testing in many states, with Florida seeing a 12.2% increase in positive tests. The state currently has more than 379,000 cases. California has now surpassed once the epicenter New York, with most number of coronavirus cases in the nation reaching more than 410,000 COVID-19 cases. President Donald Trump gave a statement yesterday at a White House briefing stating that the pandemic will likely get worse before it gets better. The same has been said by the U.S. Centers for Disease and Control and Prevention, the CDC. So please do remember to practice social distancing, wear a mask and wash your hands, especially if you are in states surging with cases. Please do your part to protect yourself and others around you. On vaccine, the U.S. government has reached a deal to produce 100 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine in the United States with the leading pharmaceutical company. Top health official Dr. Anthony Fauci has said that they are going to go as quickly as possible on vaccine development while still being safe. If you are a South Asian American working in vaccine development or are on the front line, reach us with your story, your experience on events at itvgold.com. We look forward to presenting more medical professionals on our network. With that, the episode tonight highlights COVID-19 therapies and much on politics and policy during the pandemic, along with our exclusive featuring Indian singer and composer Leslie Lewis. Here are the headlines. ITV Gold exclusive featuring Indian singer and music composer Leslie Lewis on music and passion, India. Political commentator Rohit Vyas on US presidential elections and coronavirus pandemic, New Jersey. Gapio hosts virtual Global Indian Physicians COVID-19 collaborative session on therapy for COVID-19. It's time for a short break on Vision of Asia. Voice of the community will be right back. Welcome back, I'm Aditi Lama and this is Vision of Asia Wednesday night episode. Starting the show tonight, we are looking at the coronavirus pandemic impact and measures featuring key South Asian medical professionals. We have now highlights coming in from the Global Indian Physicians COVID-19 Collaborative virtual session which was hosted by the Global Association of Physicians of Indian Origin, GAPIO. This collaborative has been fostering a system of learning to arrive at the best possible approach for the prevention and management of COVID-19, encompassing everything from vaccination to strategies and is being attended by more than 3,500 doctors and 40 countries. Recently, a collaborative virtual session was held titled Therapy for COVID, When to Use, When Not to. Attending the virtual event were top South Asian medical doctors from all across, including ITV Gold's chairman, Padmashri Dr. Sudhir Parikh. GAPIO is a joint effort of American Association of Physicians of Indian Origin, the British Association of Physicians of Indian Origin, the Canadian Indian Network Society, Canadian Association of Physicians of Indian Heritage, and the Australian Indian Medical Graduates Association. There is a story. Uh, welcome to GAPIO uh, COVID-19 uh, webinar. It's a very successful webinar for the last two months, and really uh, the physician all over the world has enjoyed this uh, webinar very much. Uh, it's my privilege and pleasure to introduce Dr. Pawan uh, Bhat Raju. Dr. Pawan Bhat Raju is an pro assistant professor in the Division of the Pulmonary uh, Critical Care and the Sleep Medicine at the University of Washington. Dr. Pawan is a, uh, part of the group who was pioneer in uh, publishing uh, US COVID-19 cases uh, in New England Journal of Medicine early enough. Dr. Pawan is uh, 
also co-principal investigator in study where they collected biological specimen from the very ill COVID-19 patients to understand the molecular mechanism of the disease. Let's welcome and hear Dr. Pawan Padraju. Welcome, Dr. Raju. Um, I, I'd like to thank the organizers for the invitation to present. This is particularly exciting because um, growing up, my father is a surgeon, and so we would attend OPI events often. And so it's um, exciting to be able to present to this group. I'm going to briefly be talking about the historical precedent of using convalescent plasma and the limited data currently available for this um, therapy. So on the left, you see a schematic of whole blood. And after centrifugation, plasma is the milky fluid that's found in the blood. This contains immunoglobulins as well as other factors. So the, the mechanism of action is to think that after someone has recovered from SARS-CoV-2 infection, to collect their plasma and then administer it to patients um, with COVID-19 infection to prevent or treat the um, current infection using the neutralizing viral antibodies. Currently, this is FDA approved in the US through an investigational and an emergency IND. Convalescent plasma for the treatment of infectious diseases has been used since the early 20th century and was associated with reduced mortality during the 1918 influenza pandemic, the 2003 SARS-CoV-1, as well as the 2009 influenza H1N1 pandemics. However, most of the published studies of these diseases were case series and retrospective comparisons of treated versus non-treated individuals. Despite this, because of the encouraging results, there's been precedence to use this in COVID-19. There's been a handful of different case series that have been published in COVID-19, but I really want to focus on um, the largest uh, randomized control trial currently available. So this, um, this study was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association in June 2020. Um, the investigators were from China and the expected sample size for this study was to be um, greater than 200 patients. However, the investigators said that because of the pandemic was under control in China, they were unable to enroll patients and so they stopped at 103 patients. Half of the patients were randomized to the convalescent plasma group and half of the patients were in the control arm. As you can see from the table one demographics, the average age was 70 year old or older. And as can be seen in most case series of COVID-19, coexisting diseases, especially cardiovascular diseases were common. And one of the things to note about this in the previous pandemics when convalescent plasma was used, such as SARS-CoV-1 or influenza, it was mostly used in a younger patient population and earlier during hospitalization. In this randomized control trial, each patient had an average symptom duration of 30 days or longer prior to getting enrolled in the study. So it was mostly used in a later in the disease. It's also important to know that many of these patients received other therapies, everything from antivirals, antibacterial, steroids, as well as antifungals. So it's challenging to know exactly if the results are due to convalescent plasma or from these other therapies. Their primary outcome, so um, on the left here is the cumulative improvement rate is the percentage of patients who experienced a two-point improvement or were discharged alive from the hospital. And so you can, as you can see from these two Kaplan-Meier curves, there is no statistically difference between the placebo group versus the convalescent plasma group. And then I just want to end by saying there's over 26 randomized control trials currently underway in, um, if you look at clinicaltrials.gov. And so I think there's going to be a lot more that's coming out about the use of this therapy. We have now another segment of our conversation with Indian singer and music composer, Mr. Leslie Lewis. Accredited for infusing pop and rock into mainstream Indian Bollywood music, Mr. Leslie Lewis is also known for the popular duo Colonial Cousins with singer Hari Haran and projects featuring legends such as renowned singer Asha Bhosle, which gained him major recognitions including U.S. Billboard Award for Best Asian Music Group and MTV's Viewer Choice Award. Talking to us very candidly, Mr. Leslie Lewis shared much on the transformations he brought in the Indian music industry from jingles to albums to MTV Unplugged and much more, a journey which truly celebrates evolution in Indian music and the creation of indie pop genre in India.
He also highlighted his upcoming project saying that it is the birth of new Leslie and provided some great advice for young artists in the industry. Here is Leslie Lewis. The, the new talent that you see around, you know, even in the United States, we have South Asian artists that are committed to bringing that fusion style that, that you're kind Absolutely. of a pioneer of. Uh, wh how do you look at them and, and, you know, what do you have to say about that kind of talent and how should that be shaped according to you? It's exciting, you know, to see that so many people have taken off from where you left off or you inspired so many people. And I think, you know, if they put their lives in it, like Hari and I did, they're going to come up with something magical. As long as they try to be me, they'll be a, 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 they'll be a reflection of me. Right. But when they take that and say, okay, we can go down this road, but let me create my own road with my life in it and what I love and what I do, I think that's when they, their fingerprints are going to come on that music. Hmm. Like currently, I'm, I'm, I'm mentoring a young singer called Kavya Jones. Yes. So you would have, you'll see her on the Ake India video with Shan and Shreya Goshal and, and she's a young singer, she's just 22, 23 and I'm going to be doing her first EP and stuff but I'm saying there's so much talent there, Yes. it's you know India just needs to hear it or the world needs to hear it and, and the US has so much talent of young Indian yes. origin singers, artists, musicians, producers, you know it's it's it just feels like hey I've been there, done that, yeah. but I'm so happy that with what you guys are doing, because you're probably doing it differently from me, and I can learn yeah. from you something. What, what What would you advise to them? What's your biggest advice for, for these artists? And I think I have to ask you, especially for the, the South Asian Americans, the Indian Americans watching you, because they can really take a lesson here, I feel. Well, like I said, put your fingerprint on it, right. so it, and so you own the music, it becomes yours. But I find that in the 70s and 80s and the early 90s, uh, we apprenticed, we, we were apprenticed under other people that we uh, looked up to or that were our mentors. And uh, I think now nobody's got the time for apprenticeship. They're just like, oh, I got a laptop, I can make music, I'm a composer. Oh, I got, you know, just because I can hum out a few tunes, I'm a composer. I'm, I'm, I just learned three chords so I can sing songs with a guitar. So I'm saying they're not spending the time learning their craft mm. so if they can uh, you know uh, learn under somebody and really mentorship is the key if you really want to learn it's going to take time right and the other important thing is you know listen with your ears uh, with your heart not with your ears wow that is such you know, a everybody's listening with their ears they're listening with their eyes they want to see oh this is great oh that's two million followers oh listen to the song let your heart tell you is it working wow do you do you see yourself um, mentoring a lot uh, continuously mentoring you have also judged a lot of shows um, you know in which you were mm -hmm. also a mentor um, is that a very important aspect of, of your music life I just turned 19. <laughs> So give me a chance to grow up and after that I'm going to get old enough to mentor. But you're already mentoring people. Yeah, but now I, I told you, I'm just a, this is the rebirth of Leslie Lewis. I've gone back to being 19. I really have gone back to being, except for my physical age, I love everything it. in my life has gone back to being what I was 19. I've write, started writing new songs and wow. doing my own stuff. I want to sing, da, 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 but obviously I'm going to have to get into the market and become a nobody, just like you or me or anyone. Wow. who's not there yet because you got to get there in the new world i got there in the 90s i got there in the 2000s how about now so i need to to kind of address this audience and and start my way my journey from way back below wow. and i think that's what's going to take time so i can't really sit around mentoring people and you know because i've not retired yet <laughs> Could we please request a line or two, either from your new music, if you're able to share it? If not... Um, That's not released, so I... Uh, okay. A dear and I actually sang you the couple of lines. That's the excitement, passion part. We said, oh, you shouldn't have sung that. It's not released. It's okay. You can't be me. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to sing you one from Colonial Cousins. Yes, go for it. Oh, oh. Hmm. Something about the way you smile You may never know the reason why Sunny that my girl, my girl is up Something about the way you smile You may never know the reason why Sunny that my girl, my girl is up Oh, Jana, 
نگاہوں میں کیسی مستیاں ہواوں میں جادو کیسا تابا بولا نہ کہ دینا یہ والا پیار کا سانی دا پا بگا بگا رسا یاروں دوستی بڑی حسین ہے یہ نہ ہو تو کیا پھر بولو یہ زندگی ہے کوئی تو دل بر ہو یا بے گرز تیرا ہو یا کوئی تو ہو رازدہ اوکے Wow. Back to, that was back to back. Wow. I was not <laughs> expecting it at all. That is one of my favorite, favorite songs. It so resonates wow. with my generation the most. Yaro Dosti. Thank you. I really appreciate yeah. you for giving us your time, Mr. Leslie Lewis. It's my pleasure. And like I said, I hope everybody gets to follow me in the future and find out what I'm doing. And I'd love to come at some point to America and, you know, perform for you guys. Maybe all the new music. Who knows? But God willing. Yes, and we look forward to having you here in the studio one day and also look forward to Absolutely. promoting some of your upcoming work whenever you're able to share Super. it. Uh, I will do that for sure. Thank you, Aditi. You, you, it's been great talking to you. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It's time for a short break on Vision of Asia, Voice of the Community. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back. This is Vision of Asia, the South Asian news segment, and I am Aditi Lamba. We are talking about the coronavirus pandemic impact and measures reflecting on the role of politics and policy during COVID-19. With presidential elections just four months away, it's important to discuss the concept of democracy and exercising the right to vote, especially when it comes to the South Asian American voice. So how are these elections impacting the policy and works in the government? And what should be our role in these elections while the nation grapples with the COVID-19 economic and healthcare ramifications. We spoke with veteran journalist and political commentator Rohit Vyas discussing much on what's at stake in these presidential elections and the implications of COVID-19 directly on the process of elections. Here is Rohit Vyas. Since we spoke about the economy and we spoke about the elections and we spoke about the political aspect to all of these things, a big question that's really, you know, um, getting into the nation and that's concerning parents nationwide is uh, schools reopening. And mm. this has been a huge debate in the last two weeks. We still don't know where, you know, the final decision is going to go. But could you try to explain why this has become such a big political issue? And, and is it really safe to open schools while we're in a pandemic? Yeah, it's, uh, well, in my, in one word, in my opinion, it's not safe to open schools in a pandemic. However, you cannot remain shut forever. And schools are extremely important for the development of young people, of children. Uh, first of all, their own development, they need to socially interact. And I think we can do so safely. It's going to depend upon each county again, each city, each state. And I think the governors will have to adjudicate that that situation mm -hmm. and leave it to the individual school jurisdictions to decide what to do. The other problem is you got working, uh, you know, career uh, parents. You got couples that are working and they're handicapped by having to stay home to look after their kids because they can't find the daycare because the kids are not going to school and daycare cannot handle so many children uh, at the same time. Uh, and so therefore, you have to have the schools open. But most important, it's extremely important for the development of, of children. We've had the schools now shut for many months. They've got to reopen. I think they're going to have to do it in a staggered fashion. They're going to have to do it very, very carefully, uh, assess the pandemic situation in every locality of the country, and then open up the school districts. The school superintendents, along with the local administrators, mm -hmm. will have to take those decisions. Among the things they're going to have to do is to uh, ensure that students wear masks. Not an easy task. How do you get kids to adhere to mask wearing? I have no idea if kids are even going to listen to you. They're, they're all going to rip those things off and they're going to be doing what kids do, which is be close to each other. They're going to have to have plus. Then you have now you have the situation where younger people uh, passing on the virus to each other may not be as dangerous. It is dangerous, but may not be as dangerous as it is to passing it on to teachers. And you'll have many teachers who are at a susceptible age, you know, in their uh, in their later years, in their 40s, 50s, 60s, yeah. um, you know, they can succumb 
to the virus if it if it gets to them. It's a tough decision. If I were an administrator, I would check out the pandemic numbers. I'd like to see uh, most people within my community tested. Mm -hmm. And if I know that most people are free of the virus, I'd open my school and say, okay, we can open it. We're going to have a staggered class system. So if you have a class of, say, uh, 30 students, right, I would have a class of 15 come in on one day, on a Monday. On a Tuesday, I'd have the next class of 15, all right? Uh, in between, we're going to have to disinfect the classrooms, obviously, overnight and the rest of it. But if we have a staggered system where kids are not sitting too close to each other, mm. strictly supervised by a teacher who is wearing a mask, kids will have to wear the mask. If the kids don't wear the masks, at least the teacher is wearing the mask, keeping the kids apart. I think we can be uh, somewhat safe. But this is all going to depend upon the assessments, upon uh, medical assessments, upon medical advice locally. Yeah. So it basically comes down to the roots, to the grassroots. Wherever the schools are located, these decisions are going to have to be taken. But yes, in, in a sentence, it's going to be very important to open schools. How we do it is the question. Uh, they talk about remote learning. Remote learning, a lot of kids, are sh uh, it's, it's been discovered, a lot of kids have shown absolutely no attention. They've all displayed ADD, attention deficit disorder. And that's because they, they can't stick before a screen, in front of a screen for too long. Isn't that ironic? When yeah. it comes to computer games, they can stick on for hours. When it comes to studying, uh, they don't like the, screen, the computer screens as much. But that's what they've discovered, and so the classroom is going to be uh, necessary. Another solution, I think, can be to have outdoor classrooms. Um, so outdoor. if we have some outdoor classrooms, especially when the weather is okay, and then the southern states, once they recover, their weather is much better throughout the year, they have an advantage of being able to administer outdoor classrooms. So that can work. Yes, I would love for you to give one last message to our audience today. Well, hang in there. Like I said the last time, hang in there. Let's all be optimistic. Uh, we're going through tough times. It's very difficult times. One of the things I'd like to emphasize, as does uh, Dr. Fauci and all the medical experts, Dr. Ashish Jha, who you've had on your show before and a lot of people that you've had on, they're all saying the same thing. Please, if you can, wear the mask. If you don't have any health issues where you cannot wear a mask, we've been told repeatedly that's the safest thing to do. And so I'd encourage every member of my community, go ahead, wear that mask, uh, because it, it's not just the other person who could infect you. You could be carrying the virus and infect someone else. We, we're all in this together. Let's care for each other. And yes, come November, go out there, please vote. If you don't go out to vote and it's not possible, send in your ballot by mail and do vote. And don't listen to the rumors of ballots, ballots being tampered with, etc. It's not true. The integrity of the U.S. voting system is unmatched anywhere in the world. So do vote. It's extremely important you exercise that franchise. And that is all for tonight's show. Remember to send us your suggestions and get your voices and organizations in our show. Email us on events at itvgold.com or you can also follow us on Facebook at ITV Gold. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch many of our popular shows for free. Thank you for joining us tonight from Queens, New York. This is Vision of Asia and I am Aditi Lamba. Take care and be well.